Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Uh, well, today, Mr. Chair, we had more bad news for Justin Trudeau, but great news for Canadian taxpayers. The Auditor General of Canada, uh, Ms. Karen Hogan, has made the decision uh, to adhere to the September 17th vote of the House of Commons, where it was unanimously adopted to concur with the 13th report of the Standing Committee of Government Operations, this very committee, uh, to complete an entire performance audit on a priority basis of all payments to GC strategies. Mr. Chair, it's fantastic that someone uh, listens to the uh, adopted motions of, of the House of Commons. So this is very good news today, uh, given all of the work that we have done here at the Government Operations Committee to unearth and continue to uh, dive into the Arrive scam scandal. That's the good news, Mr. Chair. The bad news, Mr. Chair, is that that we have received another communication from the President of Canada Border Services, Erin O'Gorman, where she states that the committee has requested that the clerk contact Canada Border Services Agency to ask whether there are intact backup copies of Min Doan, yes, Min Doan, that name again, uh, from when he was an employer employee of the agency, that as a part of the study of the Rive Can application, the committee ordered the production of all text messages between Cameron McDonald and Mindone from 2018 to present. Now, Canadians will be shocked with the response that we received, Mr. Chair, as I'm sure all committee members were when they read, the, read this communication. With respect to backup copies of Mindone's emails, Mr. Doan's email account was deleted following his departure from CBSA in accordance with Treasury Board Secretariat's directive on service and digital, which outlines how Government of Canada organizations manage service delivery information and data information and technological, uh, technology and cybersecurity. With respect to the text messages between Mindone and Cameron McDonald, the CBSA does not have access to the requested text messages. I draw your attention to a recent decision by the Information Commissioner in which he references the TBS Information Management Protocol instant messaging using a mobile device, which states, instant messages that do not have business value are deemed to be transitory and should be deleted as soon as possible. Now, that's, that's very interesting, Mr. Chair, because Min Doan, in his own Arrive Scam testimony, stated, I needed to change my laptop because the battery on my current one was failing. When transferring files from my old computer to my new one, files were corrupted and the emails were lost. I personally reported this to my team to attempt a recovery of the emails. I believe CBSA still has these laptops and files in its possession. Hmm, apparently not. Everyone knows emails do not reside solely on a particular computer or laptop. They are delivered through servers where they are usually backed up. In the case of CBSA, the service in question are under control of another department, Shared Services Canada. More importantly, all recipient senders and people on CC would still have copies of these emails from me and could have produced them as required. Neither I nor anyone else can delete other individuals' copies of emails. The loss of emails from my laptop would not result in them no longer existing anywhere else, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair, this is problematic for two reasons. The first reason is, are Canadians to believe that you can conduct shady business, position... Uh, uh, action which may not be favorable to the government, fa or favorable to the government in this case, favorable to the people of Canada, leave your job and just have none of your previous actions follow you, none of your poor actions follow you. That's what this letter from Madame O'Gorman says, Mr. Chair, that you can do wrongdoing in your position as a public servant in Canada, leave your position and the trail behind you is deleted of what you did. This isn't right, Mr. Chair, and this has to change. The second thing, Mr. Chair, that's very concerning regarding this letter from uh, Mrs. O Ms. O'Gorman and Min Doan's statement is that there is an, is an inconsistency with what this letter says and the testimony that Min Doan gave. Min Doan, Mr. Chair, I will remind you and Canadians, was the CIO 
the CIO of Canada Border Services Agency. How would the CIO not know the practices of the management of technological information? Something is rotten in Denmark, uh, Mr. Chair. It's, it's very concerning. Now, you may want to go to the... Uh, information commissioner uh, she has indicated that this is under the realm of uh, the Treasury Board the integrity commissioner certainly needs to be brought in again unfortunately mr. chair the integrity commissioner is also suffering as a result of being overwhelmed she states in an October 7th article she states she is so overwhelmed with tips and wrongdoing from mismanagement to violations of departmental codes of conduct that her budget needs to double just to keep up. Just to double just to keep up. She's already said it is causing a two to three year delay in analyzing new cases. She went on to say, if we don't get to the investigations, we can't get to the conclusions and we can't make recommendations. She then goes on to say, and this part, Mr. Chair, is relevant to the letter from Madame Gorman. We may get to the point where evidence may no longer be available. People may move on. We may not be able to find them. Hmm, sounds very familiar, Mr. Chair. People's memories fade so conveniently, they fared, Mr. Chair. And so it will impact the outcome, as we are seeing here. But unfortunately, Mr. Chair, she is not the only one who is impacted, perhaps intentionally, uh, by underfunding by this government. The procurement ombud has also indicated that he is severely underfunded, uh, which I believe is having an impact on the review of contracting with this and this government to make recommendations uh, to move on. In a December 13th, 2023 article, the procurement ombud indicated every year except last year, we've seen a steady increase in cases. So that's two years ago. Without the appropriate resources, we're not able to do our jobs as effectively as we should. Oh, interesting. He also states there is inflation. No kidding. We're just not able to do what is necessary moving forward with our existing budget. We've put forward a financial ask for new permanent funding that would allow us to be much more proactive in our approach. Good idea. Being reactive isn't actually a solution to the problem. We want to provide solutions to problems before they escalate. We need an increase to our permanent funding to do that. The lack of transparency and trust means that bidders just aren't participating in the competitive process. The first thing is to provide more accurate and complete proactive information about contracts. And finally, it goes back to our initial concerns, which, thank goodness, the Auditor General is, has uh, started to uh, dig into today. The Procurement of Bud says... Transparency matters because the taxpayers have a right to know. You, the Canadian, have a right to know how your tax dollars are being spent. And the goods, if the goods that are being acquired are actually being delivered, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair, overwhelming Order. evidence. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, uh, we're at 14 minute, I think 13 minute um, uh, over time. And I just wanted to ask how much more time do we have uh, to end this? And uh, when we can get to the motion. Yeah, we uh, do yeah. have resources for this, but please, if we could get to the motion. Thanks. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Overwhelming evidence from the uh, statement by the Auditor General today, from the letter as provided by Ms. O'Gorman, from the uh, opposing testimony provided by Mendon, from the request by the procure, pardon me, the Integrity Commissioner, and finally the request by the Procurement Ombud, it is necessary uh, that we bring forward and pass this motion, I believe, at this time. Given that the president of the Canada Border Services Agency, Aaron O'Gorman, wrote the committee that the emails and text messages requested from Mendone were deleted after his departure, and that these emails were the subject of an information commissioner investigation, and that the procurement ombudsman is reviewing many of the contracts approved under Mendone's management at the Treasury Board Secretariat through his new study on bait and switch, that the committee call on the following witnesses. The President of the Treasury Board, Anita Anand, Treasury Board Officials, President of the CBSA, Erin O'Gorman, Information Commissioner of Canada, Caroline Maynard, 
Public Sector Integrity Commissioner Harriet Soloway, former Chief Technology Officer of Canada Min Doan, Chief Technology Officer of Canada Luke Gagnon, former Assistant Deputy Minister of Health Canada Cameron MacDonald, and Procurement Bud Alexander Yeglik. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair.